their functions, but at least it's not corrupt. It's a refrain you can hear pretty often, but according to a Berlin-based organization, Transparency International, we could do much better. Britain is apparently cleaner than France, but not quite as pure as places like Finland or even Switzerland. It's a very imprecise, almost decidedly vague judgment, and the key word is that it is a perceptions index. Nonetheless, it tells us something about the state of the world. Money doesn't just talk, sometimes it shouts, and at its most insidious, it whispers seductively. The corrupt politician or official is the one who listens. There are fewest of them in Denmark, New Zealand and Singapore, all tying for the title of the world's most principled nations. The most corrupt places on earth are all war-torn. Somalia came bottom of the table, Afghanistan and Iraq only a little better. War and the collapse of government are an obvious explanation. Who's to check on the backhanders? But most shocking is the number of apparently sophisticated countries mired in sleaze. The protests against austerity in Greece might equally ask why it languishes below Rwanda and Panama, and why, for example, is Venezuela down near the very bottom of the table? Well, I'm joined now by Sam Dr. Samuel Moncada, the Venezuelan ambassador, and by Pekka Hun. Tell me how to pronounce your name. Huchtaniemi. <laughs> Huchtaniemi, the Finnish ambassador. Now, do both of you accept these findings? I mean, Venezuela, pretty near the bottom, pretty corrupt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Paxman, for inviting me. I just have to begin by saying that I find it very insulting and patronizing that you take as a fact what is basically a but masterwork of propaganda. OK, so the answer to my question is you don't accept Absolutely it. not. And I find it more very hypocritical that an organisation, private organisation, that has never done any audit to anyone, not even in Venezuela, and it's based on perceptions from the private sector and business leaders in Venezuela, no. now they are pretending to... Uh, be the barometer of states when basically corruption is you need to, to tango. There is private sector and public officials. So okay. what about the public sector, the, what, the private sector? What about as far as Finland is concerned? Do you accept these findings as making a superficial plausibility? Yes, I, I'm not uh, very surprised that uh, this kind of uh, uh, ranking has been established, but I'm not now talking about other countries. I'm mainly talking about my own country, Finland, and perhaps the other Nordic countries uh, which you see at the top of the list. You're an ambassador, you're entitled to blow your own trumpet, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> but can you tell us, I mean, the, to an outsider, and I agree, this looks to me like a load of fooey much of this stuff. Hot air. A perceptions index, whatever that is. But let's go with it for a second, because it conforms with certain anecdotal bits of evidence we have. And one of the obvious differences is that all those countries that are seen as least corrupt are wealthy, and those that are seen as most corrupt are poor. Now, why do you think that is? Well, if you ask me, then I see a correlation uh, between uh, standard of living and uh, lack of corruption. I think it mainly comes through education. Uh, wealthy nations can afford good systems of education well-educated people are aware of their rights in the society and they can sort of uh, keep the authorities under close watch much better than poor and poorly educated uh, people. Makes a certain uh, but amount of sense, please, uh, I totally disagree in the sense that, of course, you can explain by education the highly higher living standards of many countries, but in the case of corruption, when we are talking about corruption, mm -hmm. Rich countries and rich business elites are p integral part of the corruption of the poor countries. So, wh wh for example, when we talk about drug money, where's the drug money? When we talk about banks and the massive financial crisis, where the banks, I mean, public, ba private banks got massive tr billions and billions of public money, and nobody calls that corruption in the rich countries. But if that would have happened in Venezuela, we would have been the, we would have been the most corrupt country in the world. But what about the U.S.? When corrupt Latin Americans, and I'm talking specifically about Venezuela, where corrupt Venezuelan politicians run away from our law, they go to the United States, and they are protected by the United States law and government. So there is an integral participation of the rich 
countries, and not rich countries like Finland, of course. I'm talking about powerful countries with the, by the armed trade, by the drug trafficking, by illegal wars, by the banking crisis, and they, they don't touch that kind of multinational corporation corruption. They talk about the poor policeman on the streets of Caracas, but about the rich banker in New York. It's interesting in the case of, I mean, your, your neighbor, uh, Russia, a country that doesn't come terribly well out of this perceptions index, whatever it, it, whatever it means. Um, we know, because we see it all around us here in London and elsewhere, that the most corrupt people are the very wealthy people there, correct? It's therefore somehow unfair, is it not, to castigate the whole country? <clears throat> the Russian situation has been, of course, much commented by the Russian leadership themselves. So they admit that they have a problem in their, in their own society and they are, I understand, taking steps to, to remedy. But as I said, I'm, I'm, I don't feel very competent to comment on the situation of, of other countries. I, I have been rather trying to, th trying to think what could be the explanations for the good position right. that Finland has. Okay, and let me put it in a way that perhaps as an ambassador you can answer. What is it that you notice about Finland that you don't notice about some other countries that makes you believe it's clean? Well, we are talking about perceptions of mm. corruption. And uh, if I think of why this perception is favorable in the case of Finland, I would uh, single out uh, mainly the following, perhaps three or four uh, factors. Be quick, because I'm going to ask him the same <laughs> question. We have a very long tradition of rule of law mm -hmm. in our country, since the Middle Ages. Yeah. We have an administration which I would characterize as low, unbureaucratic, and underpinned by competent civil servants. We have a well-educated general public who is, which is aware of their rights and which is not intimidated by the public authorities, and we have the necessary watchdogs, institutions now, and media. Dr. Moncada, what do you think contributes to the perception of Venezuela as not being like that? If you watch Fox News in the US, you would think oh, that is Obama is a socialist president. <laughs> But if you watch the Venezuelan TV and you see what people are sponsoring this study on Venezuela, you will see that in the polarized political situation of Venezuela, well, everybody is complaining about the other side. For example, when there are people from the government accused of corruption and in prison for corruption, they are absolutely corrupt. When there are people from the opposition in exactly the same situation, they are politically persecuted, you see. My point is they are corrupting the fight against corruption. And corruption is an international problem. It's not just a Venezuelan or local problem. Do you think this country is corrupt? There is corruption where there is power. Where there is power, there is corruption. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say you don't comment on your host country's politics. Yes, I, I rather would not. <laughs> and I, 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 don't feel, I don't feel competent enough. Okay, thank you both thank very you much. Thank you very much.